Welcome to the Wire Strewn Paradise. This is the Never Ending Becoming Studios. I am James Smith Gratton. Thank you for being here today for the 47th episode of the Never Ending Becoming podcast, talk show, pixel experiment thing. First things first, I want to talk about my second coronavirus vaccine, which I'm very excited about. Unfortunately, I was not excited for the three alarm fire that formed in my body in the form of a fever, but I got over the symptoms. I'm ready to see people again and feel like I'm living in the fourth dimension. So I'm very excited. Number humor aside, uh, I'm trying to think about different ways to talk to people about how they're feeling coming out of this pandemic. Going to be doing it a lot on camera and off, obviously. To give you a new description as to how I'm doing, uh, 55 weeks into not seeing people, I'd say that this is the first week in a long time where I've taken a tea stain mug, you know, tea residue at the bottom, uh, and just taking coffee, poured it right over the top. Then like, let's do this, let's start the day. Speaking of getting things started off, I should probably start the show. Today we're gonna be talking about the Lonely Billionaire Boys Club that has formed Bitcoin and podcasting. It was hard to figure out how much I could I could squeeze in there. I had one more thing I wanted uh, I wanted to promote, but you know, we'll see. We'll get we'll get to it. We'll get to it eventually. Uh, first up is the separation of Bill and Melinda Gates. Kind of a bummer to start the show. Uh, never a good thing when couples families split up. Obviously, they have enough money to buy a hundred families each, but uh, it's it's still a sad thing. Um, I wouldn't say it's is. I, I would say it's more sad than. Gwyneth Paltrow, Chris Martin's conscious uncoupling, uh, but not maybe as sad as Amy Poehler and Will Arnett's breakup of Leslie Nope and, and Joe Bluth. But this is something we've seen a few times recently. Jeff Bezos, Mackenzie Bezos broke up um, last couple of years. Warren Buffett's actually been divorced. Not a lot of people know. Uh, I know, I didn't know that until I, uh, I kind of dug into him more recently. Uh, I mean, if, if Grimes here ends up dumping Elon Musk, we're going to be in some serious shit. You know, I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's going to be a great thing uh, to have all these, these lone wolf bachelors with billions of dollars uh, running around. You know, I, I think it's a good thing to have family to, to temper you a little bit and uh, make you think about what's going to be happening with your contributions to society because family is like the most foundational building block of society, right? Some other odd connections there, actually. I love this gentleman, Charlie Munger, who's Warren Buffett's right-hand man. They run Berkshire together. Uh, I just found out Munger's law firm that he founded is actually going to be representing Bill Gates in the divorce. One of three, I guess, firms currently representing uh, the Gates divorce, which I'm sure, you know, every family law attorney in America had their ears perk up for in, in some way. We'll, we'll have to see other other connections. I'm trying to think other things to look out for. Gr I mentioned Grimes and Elon. Hopefully, he does well on SNL to, to win her affection and heart. But uh, let's let's also hope that, that Jay Z and Beyonce stay together. And uh, there's, there's no more there's there's no fights there. And there's 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 still hope for our our rich couples to look forward to and look up to. Uh, let's talk about Bitcoin for a minute. I'm not going to talk long about Bitcoin. And I'm actually still trying to figure out exactly how I feel about it. More specifically, what I'm trying to communicate and what I, what new thing I can bring to the table. Um, currently, I, I'd like to crystallize it in saying at least that from what I can tell, its main purpose in our society is marketing. Bitcoin is a form of virtue signaling in a way in that it's telling people, hey, I am the future. I accept Bitcoin. I know about Bitcoin. Uh, I hold Bitcoin. I hold the Bitcoin, as they say. But it's, it's weird because it's sort of like unvirtuous virtue signaling in a way. If, if you look at how Bitcoins are even mined and, and the fact that I, th I think most of it's happening in China with like coal power. So if we could have chosen any way for this to be created, for this to be maintained, uh, obviously the, the, the centralization was a major element of that. But unfortunately, a lot of the mining seems to have centralized so some odd things there but just to put some sort of like stamp on it now uh, i can't get over this thing that right now the main thing it, it functions as is being like free marketing for people you know elon musk actually being a great example of that tesla famously doesn't have a marketing department 
so he can hop on these um, Bit and Doge bandwagons to, to get some free publicity. Just like uh, other people have proven in the last few years. <clears throat> Donald Trump. <clears throat> Sorry, that's lame. The, the fake cough. Let's, let's move on to something a little bit lighter. Uh, I've been watching master classes, which has been great. A fun thing to do to enrich in, in the pandemic. Uh, David Lynch's, specifically. Take horrifying imagery and use terrifying soundscapes with long, detailed passages. I'm working on the David Lynch impression, you know, but I gotta try to, I gotta do new things here. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta give you what I got. I, I, I think I'm getting a little hoarse. Uh, my, my Lynch impression's usually a little less comical, but I'll, I'll hit you on the next one. I'll keep bringing that one up. Also check, I, I saw their master classes on graphic design. That's been great. It's been nice to see all that there is to offer and kind of to jump around too. They're basically like high quality YouTube videos, um, which may or may not interest you. But a lot of times I feel like you can learn about wild subjects on YouTube. It's a great source for that. This is just like a much more refined version of that. So that's been really nice. On my ongoing saga of media to move people, I'm going to talk about... Well, you know, I'm going to combine my ongoing saga of media to move people with my excuse to bring up a, a Simpsons episode pretty much every episode of this show. And I'm going to talk about the the joy of sect, the cult episodes. I just finished Wild Wild Country and I'm doing like this cult research basically. And one thing I loved in the Simpsons cult episode is that they ultimately get Homer to get into the cult by attaching themselves to his affinity for Batman. Nothing works, none of the brainwashing, peer pressure manipulation, but then they notice he's really into na 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 Batman, na 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 Batman, and they use that for the leader. They just replace Batman with leader. Uh, if Matt's watching this, shout out Matt, I hope this hits you especially hard because we've been talking about Batman recently. Um, Chris Nolan being a recent apex of movie making ability, Batman starting off the superhero Marvel trend, what have you. So it's funny to see all these different tie-ins, considering some of these things like Tesla and Bitcoin sort of have become cults in some odd way. I do have a, a vaccine story. I think I should slow down here. I'm like getting out of breath. I'm, I'm used to Matt doing most of the talking, <clears throat> at least half the talking for some of these episodes. Uh, I do have a quick vaccine story, though, which is pretty funny. The first the first time I went in, went to a Mariano's, ended up being a fantastic experience. Thank you, Bob Mariano. But uh, I went in, and they literally had the pharmacy running this, right? Pharmacy is literally next to a Twinkie stand, though. My vaccines were pulled off of the top of a Twinkie box. I'm not kidding you. All the supplies were all over a Twinkie stand, left to right. They had like different kinds. I don't know. Maybe there was some little Debbie products mixed in there too that I wasn't noticing. But I swear that all my everything they took, you know, the capsule or everything, the syringe, it was on boxes of Twinkies. It was amazing, uh, mainly because I think one of the most powerful things we can do to reframe the way we think about this vaccination is just to consider it like any other corporate product that we were being encouraged to consume uh, at any time. And, and that's important because we need corporate products to survive. We, we really do. And I'm not trying to be a corporate chill here, but I'm trying to point out that there is this inextricable link between the modern human, uh, especially the modern American, and corporate America and what are they, they're able to provide to us at an all-time low cost. And good health in the form of a corona vaccine is, is going to be another one of those chapters. Twinkie, Moderna vaccine, that's basically how that one seemed to work out. Um, another way to reframe it, think about, I'm not going to convince anyone differently here. Everyone has their own vaccine opinion at this point. The, the, the subject's been overdone, frankly. So I'll just say one more thing. Um, I was trying to think again about another way to reframe this or think about this differently. I would like to hear people's opinions who like maybe go buy weed from a drug dealer and then won't take Pfizer's <laughs> coronavirus vaccine. You know, the, the people that are willing to like buy like crappy eighths, um, you know, where they're like pulling dog hairs off the buds uh, just to get lit uh, and they won't actually maybe save their own or other people's lives. It's just there's probably that percentage out there, you know, in this, in, I, I thought about this actually because it was like a year and change ago, 
uh, the whole vape thing happened where people were getting sick off of vaping and they didn't know if it was like e-cigarettes or if it was like marijuana products with some sort of additive added in that was making people sick and people were still smoking vape juice they, they didn't stop doing that and people were legitimately getting hurt uh but people were still getting their high so i want people if i don't know if that sort of feels incongruent to you or, or there's something there uh i invite you to think about that a little longer promise talking about podcasts i love podcasts you're watching the podcast the number one rule of podcasts is to talk about podcasts but I want to bring up something specific because I'm sort of turning up the dial on this video element um, of the podcast. I was very lucky to get a Mac computer back when I was 17 years old, uh, back when MacBook Pros were called PowerBooks. It was PowerBook G4. I think Polly PowerBook was her name. This was my life at the time, as you could imagine, a young man getting a, a piece of technology. Obviously, not much has changed there. But um, one of the major elements was that I love music and I was obsessed with, first it was, you know, ch like working with VHSs and then digital video and uh, digital audio, like the conversion, even going from tape to CD, like I found this very fascinating. And one of the important out things to me at the time when I got my computer is I got iTunes, the software iTunes. And at the time, they actually just debuted podcasts. And they, I believe, pretty much sim not almost simultaneously came out with two podcast stores. They had an audio podcast section in their iTunes store, and they had a video podcast section in the iTunes store. And I spent all my time in iTunes. Again, I was digitizing CDs and, and ripping MP3s onto my computer for music that I already purchased or even made when I, a couple years before that when I was young and in my first band. So I was very interested, and I saw this all develop. Uh, they... Although I will say I, I wasn't interested in the audio podcast at all. I went straight for the video podcast. They came out with audio podcast, video podcast. I went straight to video. Why would you want to listen to something if you can listen to it and watch it, if that's available? You could tell I come from a culture of abundance um, type of lifestyle house where there's like a TV in every room type thing. But why would you, right? So I, I remember being into video podcasts at the time and then... It wasn't even that there was original content because it was brand new. The video podcast at the time were people chopping up like, I was watching like Apple fanboy accounts where they were chopping up old Apple commercials. They showed like the Justin Long and John Hodgman commercials. They had like an old Will Ferrell Apple commercial with him in a Santa suit. Uh, and I loved it because you could actually download the video episode to your computer. So you could just have the file. And it blew my mind that they were like giving out videos. Uh, this is before YouTube. This is before YouTube became exactly what it was. Um, YouTube did exist, but it's it's before, I want to say even people were ripping videos off of YouTube and like downloading videos off of YouTube. So it was, it was pretty unbelievable that they would let you download the video podcast episode. I'm saying all this because right now you can't do that on Apple. You can't have a video podcast on Apple, which is pretty crazy. Uh, one of the reasons this show is on YouTube is because, in a way, I rep, I sort of, I have a hard time with the fact that I know our future in podcasting is already the past; that they were already there, uh, and it just wasn't profitable at the time or something. And it's, it just blows my mind. We're still waiting for it. We're still waiting to get back to where we were before. In a lot of ways, this sort of feels like what happened this last year in Corona with Skype or FaceTime and then Zoom. Like, how did a company come along after all this time with all these corporate behemoths and take video market share when we've had market video forever, right? I don't know if this is going to be some sort of premonition as to what happens in, in the podcast world. Uh, it's, it's obviously hard to tell, but it's weird when... Right now, I, I can't post uh, this video podcast to Spotify and have the video attached to it. Uh, they'll take my MP3. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be hosting the podcast in that format soon because I, I do love audio uh, ability, and I, I did learn to love audio podcasts, which I did not fully mention. It ended up meaning a different thing, obviously, being able to walk your dog or do something. Watch this is whatever uh, while you're listening to some of these podcasts, but it, it's... There's a 
there's a thing there. There's there's a box that needs to be unlocked, and it seems to be happening right now. Pod, you know, Apple's going to have some podcast plus deal, and I think the podcast revenue or the podcast industry just hit a billion dollars, uh, which is nothing. It still like doesn't exist, which I didn't used to think. It kind of felt like it was over a few years ago, like it had all been done. You know, the best way to have a, a famous podcast is to be famous when you start a podcast. I'm um, having less faith in that now, especially as we've seen some of the early, I, I don't do you want to call them indie heroes of podcasting, like Joe Rogan become not so indie anymore. And um, in some ways, unfortunately, let us down. Uh, I have a quick money story. I'm going to talk about money for a minute here. Uh, it's just a story I'd seen in the past. I personally found it interesting. And I think it can be indicative of a lot of ways that history is altered or shaped by individual personalities. The money story is going to be with uh, Carl Icahn and Bill Ackman. These are hedge fund investors. Um, they were basically taking opposing bets in a company called Herbalife. I'm not sure if you're familiar. Uh, Bill Ackman basically was sh- heavily shorting this Herbalife company, making the case that it's kind of like a pyramid scheme, that it's not a sustainable business model, that the share prices would collapse. Shorting a stock, meaning you're betting against it. You're betting for it to go down, in essence. What ended up happening was this other super rich billionaire dude who's either considered activist investors because they get involved in specific stock ownership and they get involved with the companies. He rolled in after the bet was made for this company to fail and basically kept the company afloat in, in certain ways in, in that he was an aggressive buyer of the stock. And it ended up being fascinating because it played out for years where these two egos and these two titans of industry were, were going at it using Herbalife as sort of a proxy war where one was betting for it to go down one was betting for it to go up and the, the company ended up doing well all the meanwhile. It, no such thing as bad publicity. So, something you'll probably feel uh, continually throughout your life if you look for it. Carl Icahn, I guess, just sold all his Herbalife shares. It's been going on for a few years. He made $1.3 billion on this. And the other gentleman, Bill Ackman, lost about a billion, almost a billion dollars, I believe. Um, so we're talking some serious coin. And I, at this point, Bill Ackman has admitted that Part of it was that his ego maybe got a little bit wrapped up in it and that it became this sort of proxy war maybe for his ego, for his pride. And obviously, I think it probably happened the same with with, uh, Carl Icahn. And we have to keep this in mind because this is some huge company. And this is a publicly traded company and a lot of people own shares. But it ended up really being these two personalities that crafted, dominated the headlines surrounding this company for years uh and it's over now and they're moving on and like i said one made about a billy one lost about a billy but they're still billionaires um we'll have to see how herbalife does long term but it's something to think about that an individual personality can can move things or move companies or or move outcomes for hundreds thousands millions uh billions technically there's seven billion of us so two people can change the outcome for seven billion of us. Um, one, also one funny joke about Herbalife. I don't know if it's a pyramid scheme or not. I don't know if anything's good or bad about it. But I do know it's marketed as a nutrition company in the fattest country in the world. So this is something a little funny about that. I want to end talking about something I'm very excited about. Um, not just seeing people, not just Corona ending, but some of the other uh, artists that, that I'm excited about, specifically uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I guess they're coming out with a new album soon. It's been 15 years since Stadium Arcadium came out, their last album with it that they all worked on. And uh, I don't need to tell a lot of people to be excited about this. Obviously, everyone's going to be excited. I just wanted to say how cool it is that they're, number one, I'm pointing out it's been 15 years, and they're about to put out a new piece of work, which for a band of their caliber, I think it's incredible. You know, they're going to go down as like Rolling Stones. They're going to keep doing it till they're 80. But specifically, something I heard is I heard Chad Smith talking on YouTube, and uh Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm spending too much uh, time alone. And I'm trying. I'm. I'm seeing the connections I want to see. But it sort of sounded like Chad Smith uh, was starting to sound like John Frusciante in the way that he talks. Like, hopefully, this means, of course, that John Frusciante is is 
having such a heavy hand in the production of the album and is talking so much in the sessions that the guys are starting to talk like him, right? Not sure if that's the case, but got me very excited. Nonetheless, thank you for joining me today. I was very happy to get the camera on and get the podcast machine moving again. Going to have Matt on the show again very soon, of course, and looking forward to having some other people uh, once this vaccine's fully kicked in. I'll see y'all soon. Bye.